Hi, everyone. A warm welcome from my side. It's great to have you with us today. First of all, I want to thank Product School for this opportunity to get together with uh, bright minds from the industry to talk about product management related topics. And today's topic is, as you probably already know, manage your roadmap effectively. And the webinar will be around half an hour long. And I'm going to guide you through today's webinar, which is a quick introduction of myself. I'm Julia and I'm a success manager at AirFocus. I've been a success manager for about five years now in the SaaS industry and three of them in the product world. And I also have the great pleasure of introducing you to our speaker of today, the founder of Product Hall. Quadri, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Maybe you could quickly introduce yourself and then we're super keen to hear what you can tell us about roadmapping today. So yeah, the stage is yours. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Quadri Oshibotu. I have nine years of experience as a product manager. I've been in product management since I graduated from my undergraduate degree in 2013. I'm currently a senior product manager for Alchemist, one of the leading companies that provide multiple solutions for the EHS space. Along with that, I'm the founder and head instructor at Product Hall, where I spend my free time basically mentoring and teaching, providing new and aspiring product managers with the knowledge, tools, frameworks, and mentorship that they need to break into product management and also succeed. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure having you. And yeah, as I said, uh, we're super keen to hear what you're going to tell us today about roadmapping and what we can take away from today from you. Maybe just click, uh, Quadri, you can, you can pass the slide. You can have the control. Yes. Here are some of the topics that we are going to cover today. So we're going to talk about how to create a roadmap. Okay. We're also going to talk about why product roadmap should be dynamic and what that means. Likewise, we're going to talk about communicating your roadmaps to stakeholders. A roadmap is a key artifact, one of the key artifacts that product managers, you know, basically prepare throughout the year. And it's imperative that they communicate them and share them effectively with their stakeholders so that the stakeholders are enabled to perform their jobs to the best of their ability. And then we're also going to speak about, you know, why is it important that you have a dedicated product management tool, why it's necessary for your roadmap. Yes, you can create roadmaps in, let's just say, Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. However, there are multiple benefits that come from using a dedicated product management tool. And we're going to walk you through AirFocus and some of the benefits that this tool has to offer. So to begin, what, what is a product roadmap? A product roadmap ultimately is a tool that outlines the strategic objectives of a business and how that business plans to evolve their product to reach set goals. Now, there are many benefits that product roadmaps provide to teams and companies as a whole. These include, you know, aligning your teams, properly positioning your product in the market, obtaining stakeholder buy-in, setting the vision for the future, planning resources, and more. Now, due to the importance of product roadmaps, it's imperative to know the right steps to go about creating one, because this is, as I mentioned, one of the key artifacts that your teams are going to rely on throughout the year to understand what exactly will be happening with your product. How is your product or set of products going to evolve to assist your company with reaching its mission and its objectives, okay? Namely, what are the key initiatives that you're going to pursue to improve the product and likewise provide value for customers and of course your business as well. Now, while this may differ from team to team, this is generally what the process looks like as you can see on the slide. So the first step is to gather feedback from your stakeholders. Now, we prefer to refer to feature requests as customer feedback. And it's important that your roadmap is linked to your product backlog to avoid disconnection and assumptions. Now, product roadmaps are created with inputs from multiple stakeholders, both internal and external. And a stakeholder ultimately is anyone that has direct or indirect influence on your product. Whereas internal stakeholders are those individuals inside of your business, for example, you know, members of your senior management team, designers and developers. Whereas external stakeholders are those who have influence on your product, though they don't necessarily work within your business. This can be customers, you know, industry analysts, development agencies, et cetera. Now, multiple stakeholders will provide feedback throughout the product lifecycle on multiple areas of improvement. And this can be via enhancement requests or feature requests. 
As a product manager, you should have one central location where you store your feedback because keeping this feedback with details on who requested it, why, priority, and more is going to help inform how you are going to craft your roadmap. And based on the main goals for the year and likewise the resources that you have available, you're then going to prioritize which initiatives to work on, ensuring that they relate to the key business goals and amount of resources available, which we're going to get to and speak a bit more about in detail soon. Now, as your roadmap is being created, as you're thinking about what exactly is going to go into your roadmap, your internal stakeholders especially should receive opportunities to share their thoughts, okay? And this is important because product managers do not work in silos. You work with cross-functional teams working together to ensure that you are achieving the goals for your product, providing your customers with value, and likewise reaching business goals as well. So. Of course, your design and development team should share their input. Sales also needs a chance to weigh in based on the discussions they're having with prospects. And of course, your customer success team, for example, they're also going to share their thoughts on feedback based off of the information they're receiving from customers. And these teams should be feel they should be free to share their thoughts. However, of course, with limited resources, you know, and various opinions, there must be one person to make the final decision on what goes in of the roadmap and what is taken out. And of course, that's the product manager. Now, on to step two, as your stakeholders are providing feedback, don't simply just record and prioritize what your stakeholders are asking for, or let's just say a select custom, few, a select number of customers. Those customers who, for example, may be providing the majority of the revenue for your company on an annual basis. As they make these requests, you should make it a point to perform discovery with them to understand, you know, what are the underlying reasons why they're asking for what they're asking for? And this is where an exercise such as the five whys exercise is beneficial to get to the root of the problems that they're facing so that you can ensure that as you're brainstorming and crafting solutions, you are coming up with solutions that's actually going to solve their problems. Step three is to scope feedback to understand the value versus effort, okay? Now, as you understand the problems that your stakeholders have mentioned, think about the potential features and solutions that can address these problems, as well as the value and effort associated with these solutions as well. Because of course, you do need to keep in mind, what are the solutions that are gonna provide the most value for your customers and users and likewise your business, but also keep in mind that you work within a business. Businesses have constraints. There's only so much time throughout the year. And likewise, there are only so many members of your team as well. Step four is to then prioritize the initiatives for your roadmap. Now, before prioritizing the initiatives that are gonna make it onto the roadmap, of course, you need a list of items to prioritize. And there are multiple prioritization techniques and frameworks for prioritizing ideas, initiatives, and requests. And one of the prioritization techniques that can be used for prioritizing features and enhancements is the value versus effort framework among many others, okay? Value here refers to you know customer value, but likewise business value as well. Whereas customer value describes the value that fulfilling their request will bring to each of your customers and users, which includes you know addressing their mentioned pain points, improving user efficiency, or likewise assisting them with solving new problems and more. Business value, which also needs to keep in mind, is basically how much value the opportunity is going to yield for your company. Okay. And here you consider items such as, you know, whether the opportunity is gonna generate new revenue, is it gonna assist with reducing customer churn, or for example, acquiring more users, giving your company a competitive edge and more. And then effort, of course, generally boils down to, you know, the financial costs, implementation hours, length of time, the amount of individuals that may work on the stated solution. And for each request, you will have an estimate of value of the request against the reported effort. And then of course, estimates can be received from your team once they have an understanding of the general scope, okay? And once you've estimated the value of each idea, you can compare it against the associated effort. And then as mentioned, there are multiple prioritization techniques, but value versus effort is one of the common ones that is used out there. And this will basically help you understand which are the solutions or the proposed solutions that will yield the most value against the least effort or high value, high effort, if you determine to attack more of those strategic initiatives that will greatly benefit your company. Step five is to then confirm initiatives and of course, communicate them to the entire company. Now, yes, you've crafted the roadmap, but your company, the cross-functional teams that you work with, your other internal stakeholders need to be aware of what these initiatives are. And this is ultimately so that they have the information that they need so they can perform their work to the best of their capacity. But I'm gonna speak on this more soon. The last step here is to revisit your roadmap regularly to ensure that it's updated. 
Now, after giving a formal roadmap presentation, you're going to work with your team to implement the initiatives on the roadmap and likewise continue working with your cross-functional teams for a smooth and successful launch as you approach release for the various planned initiatives. And throughout the year, both you know your internal and, ex and external stakeholders, they are going to be curious to know the progress of your roadmap initiatives. Now, are all of the items on the roadmap on track, for example? Are there any that have been removed? Are there any delays? You know, did any of the released initiatives release or did any of the released initiatives achieve their goals? If not, how far off are you? Frequent communications and update with your team is required throughout the year. Now, what's the best way to communicate with your team in this regard? For internal stakeholders, you know, there might be distinct meetings with different departments for updates. For example, one with the sales team, another with the marketing team, another with the customer success team, et cetera. But the benefit of having frequent meetings with the various departments for roadmap updates is so that you can tailor your presentation to their specific needs. And likewise, imperative to give them the opportunity to share their input and speak to any problems that they're facing that you need to be aware of. So just don't forget regular updates for the entire company as well. This is also essential. So to recap, what's the best way to communicate with your team? Frequent meetings when needed, okay? In these meetings, you're gonna reiterate the strategic priorities of the business. Likewise, reiterate the initiatives that are on the roadmap, any changes that have been made, details on what's been released and progress that has been achieved to date. And likewise, sharing with your teams what is coming next. Now, as mentioned, when it comes to prioritization, okay? There are multiple techniques and frameworks that are used for prioritizing various initiatives. But here's some things that you need to think about, okay? Now, one of the benefits of having product market fit is that you're gonna have customers that will provide you know, many requests and lots of feedback. So much feedback with so little time and resources that you're gonna have available. The benefit here is that you're gonna have customers who love and support your product and company, and at the same time, you won't be amiss of ideas on how to improve your product. However, the con is that you'll be busy constantly determining what to prioritize. But of course, ruthless prioritization. Prioritization comes within the key responsibilities of a product manager. So when you're thinking about which initiatives to prioritize, make sure that you focus on the ones that, number one, align with your company goals. Yes, your customers and users are important, but along with providing value for them, your business needs to receive value as well. Secondly, focus on the ones that bring the most value to your customers and users and likewise your business as well. So adding to what I just mentioned, all three parties should benefit from initiatives that you decide to pursue. And you can do this by getting to the root of the specific problems that your users and customers are facing so that you can ensure that the solutions that benefit your business also benefit them as well, okay? And then along with that, number three, ensure that they fit within the resources or the resource constraints for the quarter or the year. Don't set yourself up for failure by over-promising. And this is why it's important to have other stakeholders as part of the process of creating your roadmap so that you can ensure that any initiatives that are planned or outlined, anything that's listed can actually be accomplished within the set time period. Ensure that they can actually be done. Now, one of the key things about roadmaps is that it's important to ensure that you have a dynamic roadmap. And why is it important for roadmaps to be dynamic? Simply because the nature of the work that product managers do, especially in agile environments, is dynamic. Plans change. The current quarter, you might be 90% sure or have 90% accuracy with regards to what's on the roadmap. Whereas two quarters out from now, maybe you have only 30% accuracy with regards to what is listed on the roadmap. And this is perfectly fine. Even with the current quarter that you're in, some of the key initiatives may change as well, which is fine. It happens. While roadmaps used to look like, you know, rigid project plans, today they're focused on communicating the initiatives that will be addressed, the key problems to solve, the outcomes that you want to accomplish with broad timelines. And broad timelines are there to indicate the range or the date range of when items are gonna be delivered with an understanding that initiatives can and may change. So don't treat your roadmap like a project plan that's set in stone, craft it and communicate it with an understanding to your stakeholders that the initiatives may change. However, be sure to share and communicate the reasoning with regards to why they will change when they do. So as you can see, this is what roadmaps used to look like in the past. You know, formal initiatives looking like a project plan with regards to what's going to be outputted and when. But this is not what roadmaps look like today, what they shouldn't look like. Roadmaps should now look like the following, okay? Where you are providing broad timelines to indicate when initiatives are potentially going to be made 
available or complete, but likewise also focusing on outcomes rather than outputs as well. Another example, this is what they should look like, okay? Stressing on problems and not features, okay? Focusing on what might potentially be solved with regards to problems and not necessarily could. Making sure that you do have a certain level of commitment. However, there is still room for flexibility as flexibility is needed if you need to change course for whatever reason. And it's imperative when you are sharing your roadmap to ensure that you're not setting the wrong expectations when presenting it to your stakeholders holders, okay? So one very key thing to keep in mind with regards to roadmaps, roadmaps should focus on outcomes. When it comes to a project plan, a project plan is focused on outputs, whereas your roadmap should be focused on the outcomes that you want to achieve for your customers, your users, and of course, your business as well. Now, when it comes to communicating your roadmap, the product roadmap presentation is a very important time for product managers to share the roadmap with their team. And the purpose of the roadmap presentation is not just to share the roadmap. There are many other benefits and objectives that it accomplishes, okay? Now, when you think of product roadmap presentations, generally there are two types. You have a short-term roadmap presentation, but then along with that, you may have the long-term roadmap presentation as well. Now, the short-term roadmap presentation, for example, is when you present the quarterly roadmap with the company, or for example, having a meeting to update stakeholders on the progress of roadmap items for the quarter. The long-term roadmap presentation, on the under, other hand, is a presentation that's gonna take place, for example, at the beginning of the year. For example, when the product team shares the roadmap plans for the year with the entire company. Now, some of the benefits that come from presenting a product roadmap are that, number one, it provides an opportunity to align your team on a common mission, okay? Get every team within your company on the same page regarding how you're all gonna work together as a team to achieve the company mission and objectives with your products. It also shows your team clearly how you're going to accomplish company goals with the product, okay? So the roadmap should spell this out for them with the listed initiatives, as well as the roadmap presentations that will be given and the constant beneficial reminders as well. Another benefit that it provides is that it equips your team with the knowledge that they need to perform their work, okay? So for example, customer success is now further equipped to speak to customers. Keep in mind, it takes a team to build, launch, and sustain successful products. So equip the cross-functional teams that you work with with the knowledge and details they need to perform their best work surrounding the product for it to reach its goals, okay? Customers and users to be served, and likewise for your business to reach its goals as well. It also is beneficial because it's an opportunity for you to motivate your team. You know, get your team excited about the upcoming improvements for the product or your suite of products. And likewise, take the opportunity to evangelize your product as well. Here is an opportunity to get everyone on board about how great your product is and how it's gonna benefit your customers, users, and just improve the situation and matters for your business moving forward. Now, on this point of communication, here are some general tips to keep in mind when you are communicating your roadmap to your stakeholders. So number one, extremely important, ensure that you are tailoring your roadmap to your audience. So know the audience that you're speaking to. This is important to help you tailor your communication as you speak to these stakeholders, because not all stakeholders simply want to know, you know how your product is going to evolve. They also want to understand how the initiatives that you have planned may tie directly to their work and assist them as a team in reaching their goals as well. So as you present your roadmap, ensure that the content that you're presenting is tailored to your audience. And likewise, speak directly to how the planned initiatives tie directly to their key needs and asks. For example, when you're speaking to the sales team. Secondly, ensure to tell a story, okay? Storytelling is one of the most powerful skills that a product manager can have. So rather than simply sharing the prioritized initiatives on the product roadmap, narrate a compelling story for your audience. For example, how did the quarter begin? What's currently happening in your industry? What are the planned initiatives to improve the product? Speak to these points in a compelling story rather than just listing the list of initiatives on your roadmap. And as you speak about improving the product, already paint the picture of where this product is going to be in the future and where your company is going to be in the future as a result, okay? It's one thing to say that, you know, you're going to spend the quarter rebuilding the product with new technology to address bugs. However, it's more powerful when you paint a picture of, you know, how many bugs were caused due to old existing technology when you were using? What's the feedback you've gotten from your customer? Why is retention so important for your business? And how much more happier will your customers be and competitive your product and business will be once this product is rebuilt with new technology? 
This latter approach is not only more entertaining to listen to, but it's going to motivate your team even further and garner their support. Okay. And then lastly, extremely important, ensure that you're tying the initiatives that are planned on the roadmap to the business goals. Okay. So speak on these before you're asked by your team members. There are many initiatives that product teams can address throughout the year. Product managers, you know, prioritize what to work on based off of feedback, value, effort, resources available, urgency, business goals, etc. So when you're presenting the roadmap, also speak to how the initiatives will tie into the goals of the various departments of your business. So if your customer success team is concerned about, let's just say, growing accounts and, you know, supporting retention, what are the initiatives on the roadmap that are going to assist them with this? Specify these initiatives and make eye contact with these team members, especially as you present your roadmap. It makes it more powerful, okay? Roadmap presentations are one of the most important presentations that a product manager is going to give throughout the year. So if you have a roadmap presentation coming up, keep these tips in mind. And just remember, you know, the five Ps, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Now, here are just some general characteristics to keep in mind regarding product roadmaps, okay? Number one, your product roadmap should be simple and easy to understand. So as your roadmap is crafted, make sure you're putting yourself in the shoes of your customers. Again, empathy and ask. Number one, does the product roadmap outline the key initiatives that you know users and customers have requested? Secondly, does it have the information that they need to understand what the initiatives are? You know, thirdly, is it grouped into themes for easy understanding? And then fourthly, you know, is it structured by a timeline for them to know when they can benefit from releases? Rough timelines, not a project plan, just, you know, estimated dates with regards to when they might receive some of these initiatives so they can obtain value from them. Secondly, ensure that your roadmap is dynamic. And this comes with using a dedicated product management tool. So as your plans change, your roadmap can easily be updated and your roadmap can change as well. And then lastly, extremely important, avoid setting the wrong expectations for your roadmap. Roadmaps are not ever set in stone. And product managers need to continuously communicate to their stakeholders the changing you know, nature of roadmaps to their stakeholders. So no new feature, for example, might be listed in the roadmap or a key initiative. For many reasons, it may be removed or swapped out in the near future, and that's perfectly fine. Okay. While this is common and the decision for product managers to make with input from other stakeholders as well, one issue with this is that stakeholders who might have seen the initiative on the roadmap, they might start communicating it with others, especially with regards to its arrival and making business decisions as a result, which is fine. However, especially when it comes to communicating your roadmap with customers, you know, just remember to always ensure that your customers are purchasing and acquiring your product for what it can do today and not what they expect it to do in the future. But especially as you're speaking to your internal stakeholders, always level set expectations by making it clear to them that, you know, your timeline based roadmap should not be interpreted as a project plan. Items may be listed on the roadmap. However, they can change if it's determined that it's the best course of action to do so. Now, as I mentioned initially, yes, it is possible to you know, utilize Microsoft Word documents or Google documents, or let's just say PowerPoint slides to craft your roadmap. However, being a product manager with the multiple responsibilities that product managers have throughout the year, likewise with the need to share your roadmap externally with external stakeholders, for example, or likewise the ability to collaborate with multiple teams. To be frank, when you use tools such as, let's just say, a Word doc or a PowerPoint presentation to prepare your roadmap, it just adds more overhead with regards to the work that you're going to have to do. It makes your life a lot easier to use a dedicated product management platform that provides you with the ability to easily work cross-functionally with your team, for example. Prioritize various roadmap initiatives based on a custom framework that works for your team. Easily share the various views that you have with your stakeholders, et cetera. But let's speak to this a bit further. We're now gonna have a demo of Air Focus and how this product management tool can make it easier for you to craft, create roadmaps, and likewise, share them with your team. Yes, thank you, Quadri. Um, that was super insightful. And I actually have a question before I move on to uh, presenting uh, the tool. Because, well, especially for myself as a customer success manager, you know, I talk a lot to the customers and, I was wondering if you have any 
suggestions of how you can actually avoid setting the wrong expectation when the roadmap is dynamic and when it changes. You know, you, you inform the customer, yes, it might change, but there are always going to be questions about ETAs. And do you have any tips on, on how you can avoid um, just setting wrong expectations? Great question. So to be frank, this is one of the, I don't want to call it a problem, this is one of the situations that I continue to face in my career as a product manager. And there are multiple ways in which you can look at it, right? If you do have customers that are constantly asking about the ETA of initiatives, don't think of it as something annoying. It's actually beneficial because it means that these customers are excited and they're looking forward to obtaining the new solutions that you have to offer. The, the advice that I'd give with regards to this, to be frank, it's just constant friendly reminders to your customers. And also an understanding that if you're at the beginning of the year or the quarter and you've communicated that you're going to be working on an initiative to your customers and users, they are going to expect that, you know what, it's potentially going to be released by the rough deadline you may have given them. Because giving rough deadlines is fine as long as you communicate to them that the priorities may change. And when the priorities do change, you share this information with them. But some of the things that you can do is that for product managers, especially when you're presenting the roadmap to your team members, if you do have a rough estimate of when that item is going to be released, feel free to share it with your team. However, communicate to your team members that, you know, the date may change. And if it does, you're going to share that information. Likewise, communicate to your team members as well as you present the roadmap give them the structure and likewise any details they need when they present the roadmap. So they know that when they're communicating with customers and users, what should they say and what shouldn't they say? Which items are they free to share? How much detail can they go in? Should they share the estimated date? Should they share the specific date, etc.? But then along with that, another thing that you can do, especially if you decide to make your pro roadmap public, and this is something that you see other companies have done as well, is just to share a friendly disclaimer on the roadmap. If it's the case that it's your customer success team, for example, that may share the roadmap with your customers, have the disclaimer there. Likewise, ensure that they repeat this information to your customers and users as well. And if it's not the case that they present it, but your customers and users just have access to your roadmap, have a disclaimer there that's on the roadmap, easy to read. You know, hey, thank you for supporting our product over the years. Here are some of the key goals we're trying to accomplish. This roadmap outlines the key initiatives for the quarter. However, do understand that these priorities may change and this roadmap will be updated. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to follow up with us here. But I do think the disclaimer and I do think the constant friendly reminder that the items may change is beneficial. But again, I'd say from what I've experienced as a product manager, this isn't something that's going to go away. And it's a good thing. Customers are excited. Just be sure to, you know, set those friendly expectations with them. And when you do have an understanding, if the dates change or priorities change of when the initiatives are going to be made available, share it with them. But along with that, also take the opportunity as well just to chat further with them with regards to, you know, why is it that they might be looking for that initiative to be received on a certain date? Do they have any business priorities, which sometimes they do, that are dependent on it? Hope that answers your question. Yes, totally. Super, super helpful. Actually, I'm. I love the idea of thinking about it as excitement of the customer and actually as something positive. So, I'm going to keep that in mind for future customer calls and any questions and ETA questions that come up with my customers. So, thank you for that. And um, yeah, I would love to move on now um, to actually show you guys what and how you can kind of implement all the steps that what we mentioned when road mapping um, in one tool and how it just is so much easier and um, more effective to, to road map with Air Focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you guys and actually show you in the tool how you can do that. But before I start or before I show you around, I want to give a quick introduction of Air Focus itself. So basically, our founder, Malte Schultz, he came up with the initial, initial Air Focus idea because he was super tired of, you know, using, as we said, Excel sheets or Word documents or even post-its for prioritizing and for road mapping. And so he was looking for a dynamic solution, an easy to use solution and an effective way of doing this. So this is kind of how the first version of Air Focus has been born. And the main features were initially prioritizing and road mapping. But today's uh, product can do actually much more than that. 
And uh, yeah, our focus today is the first modular product management platform that actually can adapt to your needs. And it's super easy to, to build, run, scale your product workflows on a flexible platform, meaning that you can manage anything from feedback to vision and delivery, and it can be adapted to your workflows, to your needs. So let me now quickly jump to the tool here. Give me a second. Okay, Quadri, can you give me a thumbs up if you see my screen? That's good, great, thanks for that. All right, um, so um, before I show you around, I quickly want to circle back to Quadri's steps or the slide on the steps of how to create a roadmap. And the individual steps mentioned, they were gather feedback from stakeholders, discovery calls to understand reasoning, scope feedback to understand value versus effort, prioritize initiatives, confirm initiatives and communicate them to the entire company and revisit the roadmap regularly to keep updated. So let's just, I would suggest, let's just follow these steps to guide us through some of the functionalities of Air Focus, starting with gathering feedback from stakeholders. So there are several ways of how you can collect feedback from all kinds of stakeholders, both internal and external to your organization. One of those ways is collecting feedback via the portal. And with the Air Focus portal, you can engage with your community on a branded customer facing website that you can create in just a few minutes from within your Air Focus account. So this is your Air Focus account and you can actually create this um, branded portal from within your Air Focus account. And on this branded portal, um, so this is an example of such a portal. It's a fictional uh, video call company called Voom. And as you can see, I have my public roadmap um, published here. And also stakeholders can submit their feedback. They can just click on give us feedback and we're just gonna do this for a second. So let's say uh, a customer wants uh, a whiteboard on calls. I want a whiteboard on calls and they kind of add some additional information this is important to me and so on and i'm giving the feedback now and that's done so what happens with that feedback now this will actually arrive in your air focus account in your feedback workspace as you can see we have multiple workspaces in here. Each of those is completely customizable and has different needs. So for example, the feedback workspace is this one where we collect all the feedback that has been submitted either via the portal or some other ways of how we can collect feedback. As you can see, we already have our feedback in here that we just submitted. I want a whiteboard um, on calls. Um, we have our categorization of how important this is. We can further categorize uh, this feedback and work with it. Now, moving on to step two of the, of the steps, discovery calls to understand the reasoning. Step three, scope feedback to understand value versus effort. And step four, prioritize initiatives. Um, these, all of these steps kind of happen in a different kind of workspace. So we've submitted the feedback and it has arrived in the feedback workspace. But then we can also have and create as many prioritizing and road mapping workspaces as we need to customize and, and customize them as well. So for example, this Voom video platform workspace is where I prioritize everything and where I have items in here that can be epics, stories, initiatives, whatever you want to call them. And we, have, we prioritize them to um, we prioritize them in our completely customizable prioritization framework that you can see here on the right. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, things going on in here, but I want to focus on the main thing of prioritization. And this is the prioritization framework. So as you can see, we're actually also using value versus effort. And I also want to mention that everything in, in here is completely customizable. So you could add more criteria, you can take away criteria and so on. You can play around with this to make it match your company's needs. 
as I said, we have a value that including the positive criteria such as reach, impact, and so on. And then we have the effort with the negative criteria where a lower value would be better than a higher value such as team effort, money invested, time invested, and so on. Um, yeah, so uh, we can kind of rate all our items, our initiatives, we can rate it in here according to the criteria. And once we have rated it, we will get this uh, priority score. And this priority score is our main metric for the prioritization. It usually goes from a zero to a hundred and the higher, the better. And once we have prioritized everything, we can get a great visual representation of those priorities. And we can get that in our priority chart that again tells you where are your quick wins, the ones that provide you with most value and require relatively little effort. On the other hand, the strategic ones that quote we mentioned before that usually are high effort, but also high value. So they might be long-term projects. Down here we have the don't do's or the items to cut that you might want to reconsider and so on. So this is a great way of visualizing your priorities and together with uh, our priority score that we calculated, together with this chart view, this should actually give you a great start um, or a great idea of how to create your roadmap and how to plan and prioritize everything. Um, now taking that into account, uh, together with the importance for the customer um, or your other stakeholders. Um, Air Focus Insights lets you also kind of um, take into account the customer's, um, the customer's opinion, the customer's priorities. And um, for that, I quickly want to go back here and talk about this insights score here. So as you remember, we've submitted some feedback before in our feedback workspace. Now we want to kind of link this to our roadmap or link this to our prioritization framework. And we can do this by creating insights. Um, insight is um, basically a link between the feedback and the roadmap. And we can do this just by highlighting highlighting the text that has been submitted or the important text. And we can search for items that are already on our roadmap and that we want to link to this feedback. So um, I'm not sure if I have a whiteboard on my roadmap already. I don't. So what I can do, I can just quickly create this item on my um, opportunity workspace. So now I have created this item, can quickly move on to the platform um, road mapping uh, prioritizing workspace that um, I've shown you before. And now we have created an insight and this insight will be shown in the form of the insight score. So this is basically the, the number of how many customers have requested it, meaning that if it is a uh, five, five customers of your um, uh, five of your customers or stakeholders have requested this. So it's very important. And we now also uh, implemented this insights score in our value. So what it does, it actually automatically affects the priority score. So what Africus does in this way, it kind of automates the stakeholder or customer feedback coming in and it automates it to actually um, directly directly change and affect your priority score. So this moves you or helps you being even more customer centric actually. And um, yeah, then um, let's move on to uh, the fifth step, if I'm not lost. Yes, confirm initiatives and communicate them to the ent entire company. So what we can do now is we can create our roadmap on the basis of our priorities, our priority scores and our priority chart. And we have several road mapping tools that you can use. Of course, we want to use a, uh, a dynamic roadmap. And the best way to do this is using our board view that we have here visible in my Vroom video roadmap. And as you can see, I've created some columns called now, next, later that kind of where you can kind of um, allocate your items or initiatives in there depending on your prioritization. 
it's super easy to plan with your unplanned items. You have your unplanned items here. I actually planned with them already. Uh, you just drag and drop them in here, drag and drop them around. Super easy and straightforward. I don't think I have to explain a lot here. And yeah, it's dynamic. You can always update it. And the great thing is you can actually share this roadmap internally and externally. And there are different ways of how you can share it. You could you could uh, use a share link, for example, and this share link is super useful because it, let, it can be password protected if you wanna only use this for internal use, for example. And then you just um, send out the link and what you get is a real-time updated version of this roadmap that we just created. And it's real-time updated, meaning super dynamic. You send it out once, everybody is aligned um, and everybody knows about the changes that are happening. Um, then the second way of uh, sharing your roadmap would bring me again to the first step I, or, the, or the first feature I talked about, the, the portal. And we created this Vroom portal that I've shown you before where we have submitted feedback. And this allows you in an even more branded and beautiful uh, way to communicate your roadmap. So we can now distribute our now next later in these tabs here in the branded portal. As you can see, we can add pictures and we can actually change the internal information to be a uh, public information. And you can do that from within Air Focus in the, oh, sorry about that. In the setup of the portal, you can kind of change the information that you have internally to be a uh, public information and um, decide what is being shown here and what not. So this is a great way of just keeping your customers and stakeholders aligned, keeping them informed also about the changes. Then again, they can just directly give you feedback. And we can also have several tabs here. We can communicate not only the roadmap, but also ideas. We can even communicate our change log and so on. So this is a very versatile portal and super useful. Now, this kind of closes the loop and brings me to the end of this short walkthrough. This has only been a sneak peek of some of the features of AirFocus. So if you're interested in learning more about the tool, you can reach out anytime to me um, or book a call with me or some of my colleagues. We're super happy uh, to do a walkthrough with you in more details. And by the way, you can also check out our own AirFocus portal. We have our own public portal where we kind of communicate our public roadmap. And if you're interested, please check it out. And you can also submit and give us feedback that we then treat in our own roadmap and prioritize. And yeah, I also once again want to thank Quadri for his expertise and for joining us today as well as Product School again for bringing us together and providing the stage for um, this webinar today. And Quadri, do you have anything else to add? Thank you for the opportunity. I hope that the content that we provided was beneficial. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. Have a good one. And yeah, thanks Quadri. Have a nice day. See you at the Thank next you. one. <laughs> Bye.